Hello everyone, welcome back to Thousands of Roots. I'm Carrie, and today I'm gonna to talk about a topic it's probably been one of our most requested subjects, and that is um, our diet. What do we eat? I've been kinda of hesitating to do this video because there's such a broad spectrum when it comes to diet. There's people who believe that raw vegan is, is best and everyone should be raw vegan all the way to the opposite side of the spectrum where people think that paleo and a lot of meat and fat and all that's good for you. So it can be really hard to decide what is good when there's so many, there's so much research out there, so many experts saying one thing and, and another one saying another. It can, it can be challenging. So uh, it's an area I'm passionate about, but I also realize that there's a lot of mixed information out there and a lot of confusion and it really does depend on who you are. <laughs> we are all individual beings and yes, we have similar digestive systems and functions in our body, but everybody's different. And so everybody's diet is gonna look a little bit different and yet a little bit the same. <laughs> We haven't put a lot of what we eat into our videos and the reason um, is not just because of the controversial ideas but also um, those are meal times are really busy times for me and so it's very difficult to pick up the camera and to um, share those times because they're just busy times as far as the meal prep goes. Uh, we do like to try and sit down to eat together as a family and so when we actually are eating the meal we like to try and make that not as busy of a time and not have to have the camera there. <laughs> we will try though to include a little bit more of what we're eating. Um, I don't use recipes so that's another reason I don't do a lot of cooking videos because when you don't have a recipe it's hard to share that and and um, give people something that they can emulate or copy. <laughs> All right a little history. I grew up um, Kip grew up, both of us grew up eating the traditional American diet. Uh, neither of us really knew a whole lot about what it meant to eat healthy until uh, we had our first child. Caleb was born and shortly thereafter my mom gave me the book um, The Maker's Diet by Jordan Rubin and that changed everything. It began a journey so that was goodness 16 years plus 16 plus years ago a journey of learning and uh, for me a growing passion for learning about health and nutrition from a natural perspective and a biblical perspective as well. If you uh, believe in, in the Bible and you believe in our Creator Yahweh then you know the story and uh, we began in the garden and that was probably pretty much a raw vegan diet and so there's I, I understand why a lot of people believe that that is the best diet that's where we started as human beings and there's a lot of good to that diet. There are definitely people who could benefit from that diet and there's definitely people who have illnesses and diseases that could be um, healed by a raw vegan diet. So there is a place for that. However, we are not raw vegan <laughs> and we are also not um, to the extreme of paleo as well. We're kind of in the middle. Although we believe that um, we started in the garden and, and in the very beginning of, time, of creation, of time, there was no eating of meat. Um, there was something that happened, sin. And consequence to sin, Adam and Eve were kicked out of the garden. And in, in scripture from then on, there are multiple times where Yahweh, our creator, tells us to eat meat. There's also many mentions in scripture about a land flowing with milk and honey and the blessing of, of these things. So after Adam and Eve chose to disobey in the garden, it set in motion a bunch of different changes that would happen later on. Change in lifespan, change in climate, um, change, change even in the plant nutrition. And so the need for animal products began. Um, some people would totally disagree with me on that. I really think that we do need some animal products. Um, however, not as much as a lot of people consume today. Our family chooses to also um, adhere to the clean and unclean um, principles set out in the Bible, in the Torah. And so we don't eat pork, we don't eat certain fish and seafoods. And that wasn't really a huge change for us. I think Kip had the hardest time giving up the bacon. But I wasn't a big fan of pork anyway, so. <laughs> So that wasn't a huge change for our, in our journey, our food journey. But I think that it has definitely helped our health to follow the um, biblical instructions for clean and unclean foods. 
So for the most part, I think that our bodies today need some of those animal proteins and animal food, animal fats. Um, most people, there's, there's exceptions. Of course, people who are struggling with cancer may have to go through seasons of, of just being raw vegan and getting rid of any animal products um, because of the acidic environment it creates in the body and um, cancers thrive on an acidic environment. I think we need to go back to a more pre-industrial, middle-class, uh, sustainable homestead kind of a diet where you have seasons uh, for eating certain things and seasons of fasting from certain things because they're just not available. So that's, that is the journey that our family is on and we still are not there. We still use the grocery store and purchase things in off seasons from when they are actually best to eat. We purchase things in quantities that are probably too much like butter <laughs> because it's available. But if, if we were to only use butter off our land, uh, from our cow would be a very small amount of butter we'd be getting every day guys <laughs> all right so before i go on to talking about um, some of the basics of what we eat for breakfast lunch and dinner i do want to mention here that a huge part of our journey as a family has been gut healing and i think gut healing is crucial no matter what your diet is it's the starting place if you heal your gut you heal your body it's where the main part of your immune system is and it is vital, it is vital to have a gut, um, a digestive system that is working properly in order to be healthy. Um, I highly recommend the GAPS diet. Um, if you have any kind of gut issues, it's a diet that our family has used and had and seen incredible benefits from. We haven't been able to do it to the extent that I would like and so that's still coming. Uh, there's a lot to the diet. It's a lot of lifestyle changes, not just food changes. And so I'm looking forward to um, implementing that diet in our lives again with including the um, supplemental and lifestyle changes as well. Right now our family is gearing up for another GAPS diet endeavor <laughs> um, and we're getting close. We've got about six or seven items that we still eat uh, fairly regularly that are not allowed in the diet. So we're just gradually working things out of our diet and getting back to um, a gut healing diet that's going to hopefully give us the final healing that we've been waiting for. We've been on the healing journey for 15, 16 years, but um, it takes it takes time. When you go the natural route and you do things sometimes the hard way, um, it's not easy to give up foods that you love, but it's worth it. It is so worth it. We are headed toward the GAPS diet again, and we are also working toward a um, sustainable homestead type diet. Having most of our diet be food in season, fresh off of our land. So at this point, uh, breakfast typically includes some kind of cooked veggie, either off the land or from the store. Eggs are part of that, and again, uh, sustainable egg production means that you are able to feed your chickens off your land. Um, right now we're just trading the feed store, going to the feed store instead of going to the grocery store for eggs. Uh, so we'd like to get our chickens down to a manageable size where we can feed them mostly off the land. And uh, our egg production is going to be a lot smaller, not going to the feed store for feed all the time. Uh, so the amount of eggs we eat is going to be limited. Uh, also for breakfast we typically have some uh, kraut not a lot just a little serving of kraut on the side i will have potatoes with breakfast once or twice a week every once in a while i use a um, combination of arrowroot and almond flour <clears throat> and make either a flatbread or pancakes or that sort of thing uh, that's kind of a treat and then in winter time when we have sweet potatoes and winter squash i do sometimes a porridge out of that where i just um, cook the sweet potatoes or the squash and mash them up and add some almond flour some um, cinnamon, butter, raw honey, milk, various things. And it makes like a breakfast porridge. Lunches, I think, are my hardest meal. Um, it used to always just be bread and, so, you know, making some kind of sandwich with lunch meat or peanut butter and jelly, something super easy. Uh, but we've been mostly grain-free for years now. We did try bringing back um, sourdough einkorn for a time. And there were some of our, some of us in the family that couldn't handle that. So um, we are 
almost 100% grain free. We have sprouted popcorn once a week and then we get some lentil noodles that have 25% uh, brown rice. But other than that, uh, we don't do grains. <laughs> and so how do you make lunch without grains? That can be tricky. It takes a lot of creativity, but um, we've kind of settled on a little, a few items that work well. Um, that's uh, yogurt or milk that um, we pour over like bananas and blueberries and sprinkle on some nuts or some grain-free granola. Um, that's one that we often do. Uh, we do tuna once a week, canned tuna in some form or another, um, either tuna boats or tuna salad. Um, sometimes as a treat, tuna dipped with chips, <laughs> potato chips. Uh, in the winter time, we more often have leftovers that work well for lunch, so leftover soup. When Kip's home, uh, we try and do a little bit more for lunchtime, but typically it's not a very big meal for us. It's um, more so like a snack. <laughs> I would like that to change if Kip gets to being home more often. We'll probably do our bigger meal at lunchtime and then the smaller meal in the evening. All right, so supper, dinner is probably our easiest meal. It usually is when we have our meat. And so um, I'll, once a week I do a whole chicken and that works for two meals for us. Um, we do lots of veggies at dinner time, salads and cooked veggies. Right now we've got the green beans and tomatoes and zucchini and onions and things from the garden. So I like to just do a big garden mix of veggies. Once a week for dinners, um, we've been recently using lentil needle, noodles. It's 70, they're 75% uh, red lentils and then 25% brown rice. And that's it. That's the only ingredients. <laughs> And so that's kind of a treat once a week um, for dinner to have some kind of pasta meal. I usually do potatoes with the meal for dinner about twice a week, mashed potatoes or it's usually mashed potatoes. And uh, for Friday and Saturday, uh, we, we celebrate our Sabbath, our Shabbat from Friday at sundown to Saturday sundown. And so I make a huge meal for Friday and it's a uh, taco salad. And so as a special treat for that, we've found some grain, Siete brand, grain-free um, tortilla chips and tortillas. And so those are kind of our treat uh, for those two meals. We have the Friday night big taco, taco salad and then leftovers on Saturday. All right, so that's where we're at right now in a nutshell. I could go into a lot more detail, but I'm trying to keep this into one short video and it's starting to rain. <laughs> So um, thank you for listening. I pray blessings over you and yours. And whatever you do, do it with your whole heart. <laughs>